bankers. I'm from South Africa. And I am a full-time researcher for our department. At the university, we have a department called the Center for Innovative Education and Communicative Technologies. So I am the full-time researcher for that department. I fall under the DVC, uh, that is the vice chancellor of the university, so I report to them. This study, let me just give you a, a presentation outline. All right, we're gonna start off with the introduction and we I will introduce the study and then I will uh, maybe spend a bit of time on the research question and then we will look at the overall research design and the student response and then the lecture response, and then we will get on to the concluding remarks. You have to excuse me, I'm not used to sitting and presenting. All right, I've been edu in education for almost 40 years now. So I'm used to standing and doing presentations. So this is a bit limited for me, okay? So I'll try and do my best. All right, this study was conceptualized in 2019, just before the pandemic, my director and I, we sat and we conceptualized this study. And we wanted to uh, see what students were thinking, their perception of, of um, their success on the university. Because just recently in 2019, a study was released uh, in South Africa that we had a very high, high dropout rate it was almost 29% of um, incoming students, um, undergrad students did not complete their, their program. And because as a university we had, almost 240 modules online and we had this hybrid um, um, thing going on, on campus. And so just within the arts faculty, we had almost, uh, over 240 online modules. And because we, we had that in the, the pandemic hit us and there was this kind of panic and our university went totally online. So there was no face-to-face, -face, so everything had to go online. And so there was this immediate panic. And um, as an institution, we still wanted to advance uh, student success and we wanted to try to manage the dropout rate. And so we embarked on this study. All right, so we looked at the perception of the student and the perception of the lecturer because the lecturer was involved in the student's life. I must say that uh, the most striking result uh, that emerged from the study was the literature that we consulted that there is a critical analysis of the perception of student success is necessary together with the need to determine students' perception of the blended learning experience. So there was this shift from hybrid to blended. So it was totally online. Right? And so from that, uh, uh, that uh, perspective or that framework, we uh, asked the question, does the facilitation of student interaction with online blended learning environments impact the perception of student success? So we were curious. So to answer this question, we had to consider three things. We had to consider the lessons learned in the past when we did our hybrid um, learning and, and teaching and online teaching, we had to explore those lessons that were learned. And we were looking at this adoption into hybrid, from hybrid to, to blended. So we wanted to see how the adoption affected uh, learning practices at UWC. We had to explore the factors that uh, underpin the learning teaching practices. So we had to examine research and see what people were saying about student success and how um, the student was affected by the pandemic. And you know, <clears throat> During this time, at the start of the pandemic, a lot of research went into the student success. How is the student going to cope? And so we, we were faced with that dilemma. And we also considered the students' emotional and the environment, environmental challenges that they face. Remember now, South Africa is a very variegated uh, society. We have urban and we have rural and we have rich and we poor. So the digital divide is very, very large. And so we had a lot of campaigns going on the students sort of striking freeze must fall and this UWC light data campaign. So we had all these campaigns that promoted fair, fairness towards the student so that they could have opportunity to go online 
because data was very expensive. So the so university embarked on that. So those are the things we had to consider before we could even get into the study. I know this, uh, a lot of people are not practically interested in the research design, but I thought I'll just mention it. And we selected out of uh, 780 students that were registered for the four year course within the, the, the arts faculty department. And so we uh, arranged it from 2017 through 2020 academic year. And so we took a sample from that, uh, from that student and we took the module. So we chose different modules. So it was geography and science. It was like five different departments within the faculty that chose different modules and saw how, how they were succeeding in those models. So the data analysis, we designed a, uh, a question and the key ideas that we wanted to focus on when it came to the web-based learning. Remember now, we, I work for a department that we oversee the LMS, the learning management system of the university. So everything comes via us. So we have to manage that and we have to take cognizance of what's happening with the students. So we looked at how they were participating, the activities that they were involved in. We looked at the how the lecturers um, structured the design of the course and things like that. So we looked at that area and we also looked at the uh, information that the content that the lecturer put in, whether it was overloaded, whether it was too easy, whether they were oversimplifying or things like that. And then we interviewed lectures apart from the students. So those two, uh, two groups that we, we, we were dealing with. So we, we drew some thematic content from the lectures. So we had interviews and questions. So we tried to, to capture the lecturer's perception of what he or she thought of student success, what, what, what goes on in the lecturer's mind. All right, so that is just an overview of the research design. Okay, there's, there's more things you're interested, you can find it online. Okay, so let's get into the response. Remember, we're looking at three different responses. The first response that we looked at was the this part of participatory activity. And you can see on the graph that 39, um, they were 39%, they were in agreement with the idea that the online model supported the learning experience. 31% didn't agree with the idea. And uh, just from calculation between the, the median and, and uh, the quantile thing, we saw that opinion seems to be divided with regard to co-participatory activities. Can you see, you see on the, on the, on the graph that it's kind of, kind of balanced out and there are people in the middle. And uh, when students were asked how they uh, contributed to group line online activity, all assessments in the module, if they responded always, uh, then they were asked the question to comment. So we had uh, like a major question and we had sub questions under that. So, and most times at the end of the, the, the scale, the liquid scale, you would have a response like, I trust, or well, what do you think? And so we'd use that for thematic um, purposes. So the following aspects were highlighted, highlighted in some responses. Uh, some people thought that there were multiple perspectives that they could uh, approach their, their, their study from. And um, they felt that discussions with classmates enhanced uh, their, 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 their success or their study. They also uh, found the discussion topics uh, provided opportunities for them to clarify questions they had about the course and, and stuff like that. And so a large number of the population or, or the students Said, said that the um, blended learning gave them opportunity to become closer with their students. Now in South Africa, in our universities, the first year students that enter into university, they have to, it's compulsory for them to go to tutor classes. And so we have tutors for every, every module at the university. So 
the tutor would interact with them. Right? This is a study that follows after this, okay? So they were interacting with the student, uh, the tutor and the tutor would uh, engage and they would go into the group room, the rooms and, and there would be this interaction. And they felt that that was uh, very helpful in them completing the course. When it came to information structure, now this is the content. 41% agreed that um, the information structure supported their online modules. Uh, 24 remained neutral, and 35% did not agree. So this suggested to us that there was a divided opinion with regard to information and structure of some modules. Now, this was a very important aspect for us as, as a center because we have, we employ structural designers, we employ tutors, we have we have um, multimedia specialists, we have um, courses specially designed for the lecturer and the student, and we have conference rooms for, for training that allows students and lectures to have. So design was very important for us to look at. So when they were asked, uh, did the online module support <clears throat> their face-to-face -face class interaction? Because sometimes when you go online and you have this experience with the course, it becomes very tedious to be able to to uh, you know, grapple with, with concepts and things like that. So it needs to be designed properly. And so when they were asked the question, whether it uh, helped them with the face-to-face -face learning and the teaching experience, the most frequent response was 56% of the students indicated that they agreed that the structure and the support of the online module was aligned to their specific assessment class, All right? So, and the use of multimedia in the, the lectures, videos, podcasts, etc., cetera, enhance uh, the activity and even contributed to them being able to successfully complete the, um, the course. When it came to the lecturer and the lecturer and his conception of design activity and how he or she designed the uh, activity, we asked the student about the lecture. And so the student would respond that they, saw the lecture was they were supporting the learning experience and uh, and 77 percent agreed that they were happy uh, kind of happy with the, with the lecturers so that's what we gathered most huh? and it was very ironic and maybe because uh, a lot of lectures were forced into uh, going online and being familiar with podcasts and all these uh, these room chat rooms and, and we use WhatsApp in South Africa and you know all this Google Meet. So they were kind of forced to make it as interactive as possible. But they had to be taught how to add podcasts and other facets to provide a better way of that. All right, so that is the, uh, the student response. Like I said, the, the lecture response was very thematic. As an ex-lecturer, I think it's, it's very uh, safe to border on. Uh, <laughs> you tell yourself, I'm not going to give be too positive or too negative, so I'm going to kind of just uh, be there in between. And that seemed to be the case, all right? Most of the lectures are both positive and negative. You know, it's almost like you, you, you say one thing and you justify what you are saying. So we, we found that a lot, at, and I guess because of the pandemic. And they were kind of new to this blended, uh, blended technical technological teaching methods and learning practices that was introduced, kind of forced on them into the online courses. But lecturers also agreed that the success of the online module was related to both the quality of, this, uh, of the institution's uh, learning managing system. They felt that we were doing a good job and that there was a high degree of satisfaction. All right? And uh, thirdly, they felt that if they, pursue, by pursuing the, these different modalities, they were able to meet different students at different needs because each student learning is different. We all know that some of us learn differently, all of us learn differently. And so, and so they were kind of forced and they, they admitted that they positively accepted and even enthusiastically accepted incorporating videos and audio aspects into their modules. And they also validated that using a wide variety of tools and aligning the, the course modules to, um, 
to what was happening, you know, from the shift from hybrid to blended. They felt that they had to do it. So they included, as, as, as I said earlier, they included short surveys, access, the, they looked at students' preferences, what kind of quizzes students like, what kind of assignment tools and different modes of assessments and uh, the feedback, even the students could grade their own work and peer assessment. So everything was done on the learning management system and also the type of questions, okay, multi uh, questions and stuff like that. So that is the lecture response. Here's some concluding remarks. We found that there is, a, there, there is or was a correlation between the responses given by the students and the lecturer. And uh, both the student and lecturer's perception of the web-based learning environment correlated um, when it came to the areas of the co-participatory, the activities, the information structure and design activities. And we noted that this was all uh, related to the incorporating of all these aspects into the blended um, learning styles and the technological experience because face it, not all lectures are tech savvy. So they were forced to, to become more technological in their teaching and learning practices. So this research highlighted, highlighted to us the importance of the effectiveness of interaction in online courses. And all of the substantiated our literature, literature reviews and research that uh, the success of e-learning and blended learning depends on the students as well as the lecturers confidence and capability to participate in blended learning activities. So that's it. Here's just something, by the way, uh, that we just added to it uh, because you, uh, they had to communicate with each other. We kind of uh, wanted to find out what medium they were using. And I really thought that it would be on forums, but it turns out that the students preferred the tutors uh, to interact with them, to go into WhatsApp and all these things. So that was, that was and from this um, the result, we, we have another study where we are um, doing research on our tutors. Oh, did uh, I already published the paper on, on that one, tutors. Thank you. So I should ask myself, are there any questions? 